Led by science, driven by clinical expertise and formulated for efficacy, 111 Skin was founded by the renowned Dr. Yanis and Eva Alexandrides, and I'm so excited to sit down with them today to discuss how they built a brand that's at the forefront of the industry. Hi everyone and welcome to Founder Beauty, a podcast dedicated to beauty entrepreneurs who built some of the biggest brands today and where we learn exactly how they did it. We'll cover some of the most intimate stories, their path to success and how they overcame the obstacles along the way. I'm Akash Mehta, CEO and co-founder of Fable and Main, a modern hair wellness brand inspired by ancient Indian beauty secrets. Building Fable and Main has been an incredible journey so far, and I decided to launch this podcast as a founder keen to learn and connect with fellow beauty brand founders around the world. I believe in collaboration over competition, and so I'm using this platform as a way to hopefully help and inspire each other in what can be quite a tough and lonely journey. So if you are an entrepreneur or simply just curious how to build a brand, this podcast is perfect for you. So without further ado, it's a delight to introduce you our guests for today, Dr. Yanis and Eva. They are the powerhouses that founded 111 Skin, a clinical brand that bridges the gap between the Harley's tea practice and skincare at home. Dr. Yanis is a pioneer in aesthetic treatments, adapting an ingredient called NACY2, which was originally used for astronauts to protect them from the harsh environment in space. And now it's into their own brand with new formulations for their patients. This compound is now at the core of many 111 skin products and just one reason why this brand can now be found in leading luxury spaces all around the world, coveted by supermodels, designers and makeup artists alike. Another is, without question, the synergy between Dr. Yanis's 20 years of expert surgical knowledge and Eva's creative vision, seeking new innovations while also growing the brand's philanthropic arm in support of ethics and conscious consumerism. I'm a huge fan of 111 Skin, and I'm so excited for this conversation today. So, Dr. Yanis, Eva, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to participate on this podcast. I'm very excited for our conversation. Thank you. So, I, you know, I ask all my guests the same question, and I'll ask you both the same. Who, in a nutshell, is Eva and Dr. Yanis? So maybe, Eva, you can go first. <laughs> I think, um, who am I? Uh, I was born in Bulgaria in, in the communist regime. I had an opportunity to study in the States. Um, I finished my education in the States. And that's where I also happened to meet uh, the love of my life, my husband. Um, we have two children together. And in the last 10, actually the last 15 years, we have been working very closely on our brand, and it has been an amazing adventure. Amazing. And Dr. Yanis? Well, I was born, as you said, in Athens, Greece. Yes. Uh, I grew up there, and I went to medical school in Athens. I come from a family of doctors, and my um, revolution back then was that I didn't want to become a cardiologist like my father, but a plastic surgeon, which was a kind of breakthrough at that time. There were no plastic surgeon in Greece. Uh, and then f following uh, medical school, I went to the States and I trained uh, in general surgery first and then plastic and reconstructive surgery. Amazing. I mean, I was reading about uh, um, you know, your journey growing up and I know you, you grew up very close to the Acropolis and you were very inspired by the incredible architecture and art of Greece. So what was that like for you growing up? Well, when you grow up in Athens, and I think it happens to everybody, you don't you take it for granted. You don't realize how much uh, beauty is in that, how much effort it has gone into it, and the significance of that for history, for culture, for humankind. But yeah. actually, it was when I was living abroad and visiting back Athens when I realized what um, the influence has been of actually being around this culture, being around the history of Greece and uh, starting, of course, with the Parthenon and Acropolis where you have this uh, perfect dimensions of a building, the, the sense of uh, the a measure to the human uh, and not to, to something else. So all these things uh, actually made sense and um, I appreciated them much more then than before can imagine but um, I mean Eva did you have I know you grew up in in Bulgaria and did you have a similar um, experience with the culture um, that really impacted you today 
Absolutely, 100%. I think I have a slightly different upbringing than Yanis. Yeah. Um, not, none of my family members are doctors. However, you know, I come from a, a very, very strong um, female, females. My grandmother was working when it was not a typical situation in Bulgaria and in Eastern Europe. My mother was an air hostess and, you know, she was always having, waking up early in the morning, flying around the world, always coming home to us and, you know, supporting the family. Um, I don't think I was surrounded by so much um, men-built beauty. Um, however, we have an amazing, um, and I think you have been to Bulgaria, we have an amazing nature. We have beautiful mountains. We have uh, four beautiful seasons, so I'm so accustomed to having winter, summer. We have the Black Sea. So I, I, I grew up surrounded by nature, and I also had around me a very strong support network, despite the fact that we lived behind the Iron Curtain and we were not exposed to so much um, from the Western society. It was a more of a simple upbringing. Amazing. And, and how, so how exactly did you guys both meet? Was it um, in, in during the studies? Was it in, like, what, how did that come about? Um, I... I... Spent a lot of time in Miami when I was studying there. I graduated from the University of Miami and then I moved to London where I opened my practice. Yeah. However, I always had a connection with my friends, with the university where uh, we continue the scientific collaboration. So I always uh, used to go back and I still do actually visit Miami a few times a year. And that's uh, in one of my visits, I met Eva who was uh, living there. Yes, it was very. It was a very exciting um, first meeting. I think uh, I was quite um, taken by Yanis uh, because I knew he was a surgeon from Harley Street in London, and I expected to see, you know, slightly more mature person. And when I saw him, I was really surprised that he was in his, you know, early thirties and had already started his career. And um, yeah, it was it was the beginning of, as I said, a very very big adventure for us. That's incredible. And I love, um, I mean, in a different form of love, you know, I built my brand with um, my sister, who's a very close uh, loved one of mine. And I think it's incredible when you sometimes go into business with someone without necessarily, it's like an accidental um, like blessing, you know what I mean? And I remember reading about um, how you guys came to kind of create uh, 111 Skin initially. And I think it was about these initial concerns about, you know, this really high efficacy medical grade American products that are actually not very much suited for, you know, the European patient. So was it you, Eva, who was saying, well, why don't we do something about that? Yes, I was, when I came to London, I moved here because of Yanis, and obviously I, I visited his practice, and um, he actually put me on a regime of products which um, he was using for uh, from, from the United States, and even I was reacting a little bit, and I kept going to him and saying, oh, is this normal to have a bit of redness, and, and I was under his supervision, so he was telling me that it was quite interesting that even I come to him, and, and sometimes with his patients, it's difficult to really understand how they follow certain treatment, and sometimes they have concerns, so I think it was mostly that in Europe, um, you know, plastic surgery, uh, having even even skincare treatments that are more advanced were still being were being established, and we're talking 20 years ago when Yanni started his practice. Um, and yeah, he was. I actually suggested to him. I said, I said, you know, if these products are a little bit too harsh for your patients, why don't you look for an alternative? I did not mean why don't we start a company and. <laughs> you know, work very hard for the last 15 years to, you know, have a global brand. Yeah. Um, but that's exactly, you know, kind of the what led to this. Yeah, indeed, yeah. There, was a, there was a gap. I recognized that there was a gap. There was either the luxury uh, products that you can yeah. buy in a department store or the products available to doctors who were back then quite complicated. And as Eva said, a lot of times they would cause some irritation or they would be unfriendly for the uh, person who just wanted to have a product that would be friendly to apply, uh, would not cause irritation, but still deliver the results. So the, the big challenge there was, can we create something that will have the tactile benefits and pleasure of a luxury product bound together with the efficacy 
and the science of plastic surgery. And that, that was what the challenge was back then. 100%. I love, you know, when uh, learning more about one woman's skin when I first got encountered to it, there was this key kind of two words that was always positive luxury. And I love that because it's, it is that you're giving the luxury to the consumers, but with this sense of trust and commitment to, you know, changing the industry where it needs to be. So for me, it's, it's one of the most exciting brands. And I'm so excited to go now into this journey of how one on one skin develops. So from that initial idea of I think there's a gap. Maybe, maybe, let's proof of concept, maybe we can make this into a business and a brand together. How did that initial conversation start? Was it like, um, like over like a couple of meetings? Did you ha who had the name idea? Uh, how did that start? Well, the start was um, that originally I wanted a product that I could give to patients to, for them to heal faster after surgery. So I perform a lot of facial plastic surgery, both reconstructive and aesthetic. Yeah. And the big challenge is always, can we heal faster? Can we heal better? So finding a product like that was the initial aim. Yeah. Uh, that came in the form of what we still call the dramatic healing serum. We give this uh, product to our patients after having surgery, after having chemical peels or any laser treatments. And we have found that they heal faster and the skin looks better at the end of this period, which is around six weeks. Uh, but what happened uh, almost immediately after using this product was that the patients would like to use it for much longer than six weeks. Yeah. And uh, that prompted us to uh, start thinking about what is it that uh, makes these people wanting to use it for, for longer. And it was the, the transition of the skin to a healthier skin, to a skin that looked younger, uh, brighter. So instead of just becoming a healing agent for a few weeks, it was actually a maintenance product for going on for longer. And it was my patients who gave me the idea, actually, yeah. because a lot of these ladies coming back and um, explaining to me why they would continue to use it. And that gave me the idea to create originally a line for my office in order for these ladies to, and men actually, I do have a good percentage of male uh, patients yep. who would want to use it as a product rather than a healing serum. Amazing. And then you have a, um, so was it the healing serum that was also first to have this kind of custom molecule, the NACY2? Exactly. So during that initial time, I collaborated uh, with a group of leading uh, scientists who had tested ingredients. I, as a clinical doctor, have the experience and the possibility of trying products to patients and seeing the results on the skin, evaluating these results and creating questionnaires. But I didn't know the ingredients to the extent that they did. So we collaborated together, we tested different formulas and after actually years, we made NACY2, which is a complex of ingredients, not just one. Yeah. Uh, it contains NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine, uh, amino acid, yep. which is very important in the creation of antioxidant in our body. Uh, one of that is glutathione, and glutathione is the master antioxidant, so it protects us from aging, it protects us from a lot of the harm um, that we receive from the environment, and from, for example, sun radiation, yep. pollution, stress, all the things that makes us AIDS. So giving NAC to the skin creates glutathione and glutathione reverses the damage and makes you look better. Uh, but we didn't stop there. We wanted to make it even better. So we uh, also mixed it with a form of vitamin C that as we know, vitamin C is also an antioxidant and also a protector of the collagen. Yeah. Uh, it helps the skin create healthy collagen, which is the matrix of um, the skin, what keeps it strong. Uh, and also another product called Eskin, which is a compound of um, uh, agents that actually improve the blood circulation to the skin. So these three things together act synergistically, which means they improve each other's ability to work. And that's what NACY2 um, offers to the skin. That's incredible. And I, I'm assuming because it's such a breakthrough kind of something you've comprised, it's a patented formula, right? That that's really one-on-one -on -one skins. 
It, um, it is, it mean, is absolutely, and this the uh, it exists in all our products of uh, the original line. We have expanded, of course. Now the, the, yeah. the line has expanded in five different categories, but the original one uh, contains an ACY2. Amazing, and um, you know. I would love to know, I guess the name came from the Harley Street Clinic. Was it 111 Harley Street? Is, that just a, is this the birth of 111 Skin's name? Indeed, indeed. We, we kind of uh, looked at different names and I, I have to say, I didn't want to call them Dr. Yanis. <laughs> so I, I, I felt that, you know, it's enough to, to have your own practice and yeah. to, the following from, from your patients. But uh, when it came to a product, I wanted to give the idea behind it. And I wanted to make it sound scientific, which it is. Yeah. Uh, 111 for me is not just the address of my Harley Street clinic. It's also a number that is very powerful. Yes. Uh, it means to be first, to be best and to be unique. And uh, this, I think, is what 111 Skin is all about. Amazing. I love I love when a, like a name comes to be and it just it just I mean, looking back, it's probably quite surreal, but you're like, wow, that's a really good name. So. <laughs> no, we actually didn't have a name when he developed the very first product because mm -hmm. it was very much about enhancing the customer journey True. and the experience it was made for them. Yeah. yeah, so it was dramatic healing serum. It didn't, we did not create a brand. We created a product that was given for free and it was never, we didn't have a business plan and we didn't have an expansion plan. It was only an, when we actually sat with Harrods and we were, um, we had to present the brand um, when we brought the very first, uh, just a simple medicinal packaging, they, they actually said, so what is the brand? <laughs> <laughs> and we had to very quickly, you know, decide what the brand name is. And actually sometimes quick decisions can be quite powerful because for me as well, it was very pioneering because we also, the way we created the brand, we didn't go to a cosmetic manufacturer. We worked with scientists and we created something from scratch. Every single ingredient was there, not as a base, but as an addition because it needed to be there. So yeah, so that name came quickly, but it's very, very meaningful to us. I love that. I actually, for me, the brands I get excited about is when the first products are created as a product for a need, as opposed to the brand first creating products for uh, a brand's in portfolio, because it really then makes you really realize that these products are the, the, the focus, right? And they have definitely some purpose and efficacy. So uh, it's actually funny, like with Fable and Main, when we launched our brand, it was initially a beard oil my sister was formulating for someone. And then we were like, well, these ingredients are amazing. Let's make a hair oil. So the hair oil, which is our hero product was the first product and then the name was second. So that's sometimes a good thing in a way. Well, let, so. let me say um, that I have used your products today, by the way, oh. and uh, <laughs> here I am. I think they're, they're working very well. So well done. Oh, it's not you. just actually Yanis, he keeps this product in the car. And this weekend, my 10 year old son, we were yeah. going to a Christianing and he, we found the product and he put an enormous amount in his hair. So he looked really, really slick and everybody Amazing. was complimenting him. Oh, I love this. That's what I love to hear. This is great. And I love that, you know, from founder to founders, we can like, um, you know, try each other's products and our, our own babies, our own creations and just share them. It's, it's incredible feeling. Um, but as you said, you know, the, the, this NACY2 complex, which is found in, in the main healing you know, range, there is other ranges too. So um, maybe one of you could tell us about kind of the whole portfolio to date. I think probably yeah, yeah, this is well, the best. The, the, the initial uh, line is our reparative line and yes. uh, reparative because the whole theory behind it is that uh, the, heal, the, the skin has its own ability to heal itself every day. Yeah. And if you enhance these intrinsic mechanisms, then you can keep uh, the skin theoretically, uh, you know, young forever. So yeah. we are doing that with NACY2 and the other ingredients in the reparative line. Yeah. Then uh, our second line is the intensive, where yeah. in most formulation, NAC is still present, but we have added other ingredients that improve the absorption of the ingredients through the skin. So uh, one of the key challenges when you create the skin uh, care companies that you have to have products that can go through the skin because you might have all these amazing ingredients but if they don't go through the skin yeah. barrier we call it a barrier because it's there to stop things from going in yeah. then you're not getting to, to get uh, effect 
Um, then we create a treatment which uh, is inspired by the treatments we do in plastic surgery and dermatology clinics. So we found solutions for hydration. We know that, for example, mesotherapy, which is the injection of small amounts of hyaluronic acid and vitamin C, makes the skin uh, very hydrated, bright, and this happens within the first session, really. Uh, so we wanted to create a similar product and we created eye patches and patches for the face that are the same consistency. So 95% pure hyaluronic acid and 5% vitamin C that melts straight into the skin. So this is our treatment uh, range. Uh, we have another one which is inspired by a cryo and it's our regenerative line. So cryotherapy was used from the ancient times, but it's only of, as of the last 30, 40 years when we start realizing the benefits to the body, mostly on anti-inflammation uh, and, uh, cre and uh, reducing uh, aging. We, we use it a lot in a lot of uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis type of patients, but then we realized that actually works very well for the skin as well. And we wanted to take these benefits that we've seen from the cold temperatures and translate them into a product. And this is uh, the creation of the regenerative line. Well, this is another yeah. example of how we, the product comes as a natural progression. I mean, in the clinic for Yanis, it was, he, he, when he was giving the product to his patient, that was already his reward because yeah. the patients were healing faster. So that was mission completed for him. Um, we also created the whole body cryo chambers because we love um, the effects of cryo, how it, for me, it gives me clarity of the mind, but as Yanni said, it works for detoxification, for anti-inflammation. So we, we didn't expect to have a product range, but so many people were um, actually saying how amazing they feel and wouldn't it be nice to have a product that actually mimics the effects of cryo on the skin because when you do the cryotherapy, you have really tightening. They, they were reporting to us that, um, you know, the skin, the pores are shrinking temporarily after the cryo. So that's how we set about to actually create a range that it's a little bit even like difficult to explain because it was so innovative way back. I think now you hear more cryo and some other people are venturing into this, but we launched cryo products five years ago and it was not anti-aging per se. It was really for fast-paced lifestyle that it's product on the go that gives you immediate boost to the skin and it, it, um, it shrinks the pores. So we had ingredients like ATP, which is the fuel to the cells. So we, this is how we do things. We do them a little bit as a result of something that we have already have proven. I mean, I, I think also, apart from just the incredible array of products you guys have, and I've tried most of them and they are incredible. I mean, I've been a huge fan from a long time. But what I also love is, and I call them, for you, I'll, I'll name them after the four pillars I see on your website. And I think I want you guys to talk about them because they're so important. Is the manufacturing process and this whole positive luxury, the philanthropy, these um, incredible sustainability, you know, that you're, you're working on and the commitments. Um, and also a little bit about sort of like the vision of um, One Woman Skin today. So if we start first with the manufacturing process, um, I would love to kind of like, you know, if you could explain to our audience today, what is your ongoing commitment for here? So manufacturing is something that really excites me at the moment because um, we have been around for 10 years yeah. producing products. And in the beginning, we were a tiny, tiny player. But actually today I had here in, in the office um, my manufacturer from Korea, because that's where we manufacture all of our masks. And it was such an exciting conversation to, to understand that we are, their, we are their biggest supplier, their biggest client. Um, and it's so when the situation is like this, you can really start demanding change. Yes. And you can, and you can go to them and say, this is what I expect. I want the, you know, the mask to be biodegradable, I want compostable packaging. You can, you can dictate the terms in a sense of you can really push them to be on this journey with you. So it's something that it, for me, I've, I have only been able to do this in the last few years. Because you know, from the inception of the brand, I use mostly glass packaging. This is what I believe to be the most sustainable 
uh, resource because it's continuously um, ab abundant. Exactly. So this, you know, this was my commitment. That commitment then, when actually so many companies were not involved in sustainability. Now it's very much on the forefront for, for everyone, and it's very very important that now I can drive even more change because this is how we have to challenge our manufacturers. I think it's so important and I, I love the fact that, you know, you, when you realize you can actually make a change, not just for your brand, right, but for other brands out there, these manufacturers um, need that push sometimes from the brands, their clients to enforce the change because um, the industry is moving, new technologies are arising and yes, there might be some barriers to entry, there might be some higher costs, but by putting some pressure on them, it does make the whole industry move. So thank you for saying that. I think it's so important. And if any founders are listening, I think it's our duty to ensure that, you know, we are the, the kind of catalyst of change for the vision we want to see um, in our brands, but also in the industry. So that's really important. Um, and there, there's another section that, you know, not a lot of people talk about, but it also has to do with logistics as well. So, yes. it's, you know, when it comes to sustainability, it's also what does your production cycle look like and can you optimize? Because in the beginning is the same thing. You can, you do whatever it's needed to ship your products from whenever it's possible just to satisfy the demand because that's how you, you know, you survive as a brand. Mm. Um, but I think now there's so many ways that you can optimize and look at the whole carbon journey of products and how you can utilize and shorten the whole cycle. So there's so much and, and I, this, is, this is my passion now. I really want to understand how we can make this process long term so much more sustainable. It's so true. I mean, one thing I'm doing now, um, and you know, I, I can show you the links later, it could be good. I'm taking a few courses from Cambridge and Harvard. Um, they're like six week courses in like circular economy, sustainability, um, not just to learn, but also to maybe connect with other industry people and the lecturers, because um, you can never stop learning. Um, so yeah, that's something I've just started to do. I was inspired by another founder on the podcast who did the same. And yeah, that's something I think could be quite interesting. Just to I would love try. to know. I'm, I cannot guarantee I'll be taking the course, but someone, <laughs> someone. from my company. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what I was saying. Is it's it's that kind of um, you know now when you build a company, it's so great to be able to hire experts in their own field, but you need to sometimes inspire them with the tools and also the vision that you seek for them to be the ones to make the change for the company. So, I think it's very important you said that because. I need to get better at that. I'm, I'm accepting air freight costs just to, to please, please the retailer right now because I'm on high growth mode, right? But actually I need to sometimes take a step back and think this Look, is not- Look, in the beginning, in you the beginning, to. you don't have a choice because yeah. it's your business and you also have duty for the people that work for you. It's, exactly. And you also have duty for the, for, for the extended um, circle of your suppliers and manufacturers. So they, they rely on you to deliver products. So, you, you have to do everything possible, but I think along yeah. the way, you, you have to start making these choices that long-term make perfect sense for what you believe to be the right path for you. 100%. No, I think it's very, very important. And you know, now going to like philanthropy, um, having following you, know, you guys on social media for a while, I can tell, especially you know, Eva, when I've seen your stories, you're a huge advocate for Every time I see your story, some form of charity, gala, dinner, you're really doing a lot for this uh, space. It's truly inspiring um, as a founder to see you making the time for these initiatives. And I know as 111 Skin, you work with different organizations and charities like Women for Women, Make-A-Wish. So uh, would one of you be able to tell us about your philanthropic commitments? For me as well, I, I feel very fortunate that we are where we are at yeah. this point of our development. And we have always been committed to giving something back. Of course, when we were a small brand, it was mostly product or small donations. Yeah. And, and now as we're a little bit bigger, we can really make a, a more significant impact. So we give continuously 10% of our online sales to Women for Women International. Um, and at times of, of more, you know, serious conflict, serious conflicts, we always give more. So when it was actually currently still is um, the war, the situation in Afghanistan. Now we have Ukraine. Mm. We always um, give 20 percent or, yeah. we, or we give actually a full percentage of all of our profits of certain products. So 
there's always so much more than you can do as a brand, but I think the most important thing is that you start somewhere and you share this whole commitment with all your company. I have a hundred people that work for me. Most of them are very, very young, and it's important that we're all vested together and we know that all of our efforts, eventually, we share all our success for something that can assist people. And I personally very, very strongly believe in, instead of just giving money directly to people, I believe in working with charities that can empower people to have skills. Because I, this is what happened to me. I was able to have the education. I was able to have the skills. And in my, you know, I have a certain progress in life. And I know that if you empower a woman in a community with either vocational skill or education, she's going to do miracles to support the not just her family and friends, but the whole extended community. So this is something that I also want to do so much, much more going forward. Oh, I love that. And have you seen, um, you know, we, we met uh, last week at the Founded Beauty um, kind of breakfast. Have you seen this collaboration being a big opportunity for brands uh, to come together and combine forces to make the change? A, a thousand percent. I mean, right now we are sending thousands of our uh, cleansers to Ukraine and yeah. it, it's going in in a in a huge truck with so yeah. many other beauty products so definitely I think you know we inspire one another the, as you said the industry doesn't have to be competitive we can all yeah. be working closer together because you know when you do something it, you should do it from your own heart and I think all of us want to continuously support the same thing happened with, with NHS. I mean, we started donating to NHS, NHS charities because Yanis is a surgeon, so it was very, very close to his heart when he saw people working extreme hours, you know, their faces being um, damaged from wearing masks, and when it was the scariest moment, you couldn't take, you were wearing PPE and masks all the time. Uh, but so many other brands, you know, we, we have a, a surgeon founder, so many other brands didn't. And, you know, they also supported and sent products and donations. So we, I think the beauty industry is, um, is very much, we, we follow one another and sometimes it's in a very positive way. We combine efforts. 100%. Couldn't agree more. Um, no, so I know we talked about kind of the, the manufacturing sustainability and um, philanthropy, but I would love to talk a bit about kind of, I guess, the vision, MPD, future of 111 Skin. So maybe Dr. Yanis, if, um, you know, what are you, what's in the pipeline that you can share? Yeah, well, this is the part that really excites me the most. I always try to find the best next product. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, some exciting um, products coming up actually this year. Uh, we have uh, essences that are being launched very soon. Uh, and I think this is a very important category because it comes between cleansing and applying a serum or a cream. And it's the step that actually primes the skin for best absorption. Uh, and um, uh, we feel that uh, this category, we have actually implemented our values, which are really to infuse a lot of science into it. And we have uh, found incredible ingredients to, to promote uh, the targets of this stepped approach. We have uh, exciting body products coming up. It's something that for years I wanted to launch and it was always a reason why I couldn't. But finally the time has come for that. I think it's important to uh, devote time and effort not just on our face, neck, but also on the rest of the body. Uh, and uh, the body borders, uh, products will be an in integral part of one-on-one -on -one skin. Actually, that's another example that Yanis always wanted to launch in the retail environment, but we actually have body products in all of our spas. And that's another perfect example of how the products already exist. They were not really meant to be a retail product, but they were so well received in, in we are in 65 five-star spas around the world. And we continuously keep hearing from the spa directors, can, can we have this product as a retail product? Because so many of the clients in the spas they feel, you know, after the treatment, they, they fall in love with the product and they like to be able to take it with them at home. So that's another example where these products are, are tested and tested and tested in all of these, you know, global environments. And now we are very confident to launch them in, in retail. 
Amazing. I mean, where where is like the uh, depending on obviously the the country or continent? Uh, where can people find one 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 skin today in retail? So of course, our website is yep. um, one of the easiest and best ways to reach all our products. Uh, we have a lot of uh, very good uh, collaborators online as well, such as Netaporte, for example. Yeah. Uh, in, in UK, we started in Harrods, and now we have expanded in Selfridges, Space NK, Liberty, Harvey Nichols. Uh, in the States, uh, we are in all the major department stores, such as uh, Limon Marcus, Saks, yeah. um, also Blue Mercury, specialized uh, chain shops. Uh, so we have a very wide variety of distribution, but it's very selective as well. So we, we carefully uh, find who would be, because we consider these people to be not just distributors, but partners. So we want them to A, represent the brand as it should be, but also provide a great service to our consumers. Amazing. That's amazing. I mean, do you, do you feel today that it's a bit sometimes different hats going from a spa environment to a retail environment, or have you found a lot of synergies in these spaces? Well, it's a different feeling for sure, and yeah. different people buy products um, in a department store, different people buy them in a spa. Uh, I think the sensorial experience one gets in a spa is very important. Uh, we know that people who try our products usually like to buy them, <laughs> so we, we have a very uh, strong um, following in, in the spa category. As Eva said, it, it's just a place where we feel naturally um, comfortable because Eventually, what we're doing in the clinic is translated to things that we do in a spa, but modified to be easier and to be safe and to be yeah. applicable to everyday life. So yeah. I think because of that, we, we have an understanding of how the body works, how the skin will absorb the products, and we have created different protocols that uh, we call scientific rituals, actually. Amazing. Well, in a sense, we were a spa brand before we are, we are a retail brand because in Yanis's clinic, there's always facials being per performed. He believes very strongly in the non-surgical and facials are an important part and body treatments yeah. post uh, different liposuctions and laser therapies. There's always body therapies to go along. So we so the spa is kind of the natural progression for yes. us as a brand. We are very much experiential brand. We are not just a brand that it's only on a retail environment, but also yeah. we are challenging the retail space. And if you if you come, for example, in our counter in Selfridges, you would have yeah. a cryotherapy at counter, you would have LED treatment. So we wanted to really merge kind of where we started and what our philosophy is, which is treatment and scientific rituals. I actually want to ask about that. I was literally about to say because um, we're talking to Selfridges right now about launching and definitely that you know, they're quite an interesting retail environment where they're quite forward thinking both in sustainability, innovation. Um, and, you know, they're saying they're very open to the fact that we, we could launch Fable and Maine with a sort of experiential um, kind of, uh, I guess you could say like a, a service, uh, whether it's like a head massage or something. And um, I would love to know sort of, do you find it's, um, proving to be successful to also the sell through and the brand awareness by having these treatments at these counters? A thousand percent. I, I think, you know, we are the number one brand um, in, in our division. Yes. Um, so I think it's definitely the fact that we have these experiential treatments and the clients can be immersed into who, what we represent as a brand. It also gives you a chance to have quality conversation with a client. It's not just about selling a product. Exactly. It's, it's, it's understanding. It's also, in a sense, having a mini consultation. So our most of the people that work for us are actually trained therapists. So they can assess the skin. They can perform a treatment. I think this is definitely the way forward. And if you have this opportunity, you personally and, and everyone from your brand, you would get to know you your clients much better because yep. it's a different synergy. 100%. I mean, for those listening, of course, apart from going to, let's say, a retail environment like Selfridges, a clinic or in one of the spas, let's say people are now invested. They're like, cool, okay, I'm obsessed with this brand already by hearing Eva and Dr. Yanis, and now I want to 
Try something from 111 Skin. So they're on your website right now. Imagine right now they're on your website. What would you recommend as a good starting point for someone who, let's say, is pretty interested in beauty, but curious to try something from your brand? I would definitely start with the NAC White Theorem, which is the serum that started it all. It's an all-around product that is good for men and women for types of skin, and it will give you skin anti-aging, brightening, and moisturization. So I would highly recommend starting with our serum. Amazing. I think for me, I mean, I'm wearing our masks because I had a very long day. Um, So I think this is for for someone that is just um, starting and it's inquisitive about the brand. I think our masks have, you know, gained this popularity of being really targeted solutions and the masks that actually work. So that yeah. would be an easy way. Um, I'm holding in my hand for a very long time because I wanted to show you when he was discussing about products. Yeah. This is a, um, a miso patch. So uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be a video or not, yeah. but it, it has 150 cones and you apply it onto uh, the face and you leave it overnight and it deposits hyaluronic acid and vitamin C. So these are also uh-huh. the kind of more adventurous things that we do as a brand, more, way more scientific. Yeah. It's, it's another level of, uh, of masking. So you can you know, have more dynamic ways. But um, I don't know, I would, I mean, I use all of our products. I think I might go for a supplement as well, because it's very much about, you know, 360 beauty inside and out. And, you know, be playful, be adventurous in, you know, try any, any product you try from us. I think you, you would expect to have results. Exactly. And I think, I think definitely the, the sheet mask is a great way just to first experience the product. Um, I, I know you have like this, the pressure sheet masking edit, you can get like a, one of everything. And that's like a really good way just to experience, I guess you could say all of your iconic masks. Um, so I think that's a, a very good shout as well for anyone um, listening. Um, but I, I do want to go into, um, before we wrap it up with some fire run questions, a bit into like kind of your rituals for success as founders, um, because the pandemic has definitely shaped, I guess you could say, our daily lifestyle and work ethic and team culture. So what do you guys both do? Um, is it similar? Is it different to gear your day up for success? Three days a week, we are very lucky and we have exactly the same ritual. We wake up with the children, which is very early, around 7 o'clock is when we have to wake them up. Um, We have breakfast, then we either walk one of them to school or the other one to the tube station. And um, then we either go for a run or we do a yoga class together or we do a boxing class together. So we often start our morning very energized spending time together then we walk and we have a coffee and we are ready for the day two days unfortunately i don't have yanis in the morning because he wakes up way before anyone else and he's off to surgery and i never know what time he starts or what time he would finish Um, but for both of us you know physical exercise and spending quality time with the children is a must whenever we have an opportunity and I think also, you know, creating uh, your own routine. Uh, yeah. I think everybody has their own way of meditation or time with themselves, uh, quality time. And um, also having a group of friends is very yeah. important. And uh, having time uh, with your friends. Uh, having fun is part of what keeps us sane. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a, about keeping balance between work uh, and leisure and having uh, never to forget that you can only work so hard for so long and eventually if you push yourself you're not going to be happy so uh, going back again where we started with the Acropolis and the yeah. uh, measured uh, approach to life that the ancient Greeks first uh, talked about so I think it's true that it's it's important to keep this balance in your life and it's different from person to person yeah. Uh, but indeed, you know, a healthy lifestyle is what we believe in. It's part of the reason why we have one woman skin. Uh, we, we believe in um, healthy exercise. We believe in uh, treatments such as cryotherapy. We believe in um, uh, good food and uh, a laugh every day with your friends. So that's, 
That's very important Watch advice us. and um, quite timely for me because I, I'm only two years into my business and I'm already feeling the burnout of overworking. <laughs> <laughs> so I have many more years to go, so I better start yeah. listening. And it's, it's funny how if my grandmas were, my grandparents were here today, they're the ones who've been, you know, definitely from generation to generation, having the best, like, you know, we come from Ayurveda and sometimes just really taking care of your body, your mind and going back to the old traditions is what we need in this ever pacing world with iPhones and social media. It's, it is that and taking those moments for yourself it's, and balance, very important. So good. I needed to hear that. So thank you very much. Um, so now I would love to just go to some fire round questions. Um, and this is sort of the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, I can guess I'll do first um, uh, Eva and then Dr. Yanis. So um, Eva, what is another beauty brand that you're currently loving? Apart from Fable and Main, because we all know now. You know. <laughs> exactly, here it is. <laughs> so, uh, beauty, beauty, beauty. Um, I think it's probably makeup, and I like I love makeup by Mario. Yeah, uh, amazing. And Another Mario very came on the podcast. Founder that I've met over you know for many years now, and he is working very long hours, and I think he can use some of the advice we just said. Hundred percent. Uh, he came on the podcast, and you have to listen to the episode. And uh, I think we cried together twice. Um, we were very emotional in this episode, um, and yeah, it was a good one. But uh, he's an incredible human being, so hardworking. But it just shows we're all going through our stuff, and what looks incredible on the surface. There's a lot of hard work, a lot of um, fear, even you know, because it's a very lonely journey, and everything we put out there as founders, it could be. You want the very best for the consumers and you guys specifically, you know, I can tell you're building this brand made by your customers and your consumers. So you want to do right by them. So it's scary at times, but it's also rewarding too. So. It's okay to cry. I cried today <laughs> when I had to say goodbye to someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's good to be heart on the sleeve. Um, and Dr. Yanis, what's one of your beauty brands that you're loving? Um, Actually, I like some of the products from Kiehl's. I think it's yeah. a pro, you know an original brand that uh, had a similar story like ours, start, start, starting as uh, something that was a necessity but progressed to be um, you know globally acclaimed. And yeah. uh, you know, they they are some products that I like and I use. He's very much a perfume guy. He has way more perfumes than I do. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, my, my dad is forty years in the fragrance industry, so um, oh, really? uh, I, oh. yeah, he has heritage brands like Patu and Worth, and um, yeah, and new brands like Ariana Grande and Jennifer Lopez. So he's done it all. So I know That's fragrance, great. but fun fact: my mom is allergic to fragrance, so we were never allowed <laughs> perfume in the home. So really? it's like a worst catch twenty two. <laughs> so, that is funny. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, next question, um, Eva, what is a guilty pleasure of yours? Guilty pleasure would be having lots of chocolate on a daily basis. I think all of us have this problem, so <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> and Dr. Yanis? Well, I do like a glass of uh, good red wine with my dinner, so I yes. do know my wines and I like to, to try different regions and different styles. Nice. Um, Eva, what are you currently watching or reading? I am watching um, something with my son. We are all watching it. It's called Not the Vikings. Uh, the la oh, the Last is it Kingdom. The last, last Kingdom. The Last yes, Kingdom. Last Kingdom. Yeah, and we're thoroughly enjoying it. Nice. And uh, uh, yes, and I'm, I'm actually something that just started uh, inventing Anna. Yep. Oh, you're gonna like. Every so I like real stories, so um, I do. I want to get to see what happens next. It's just oh, my it, first. Episode. I liked it. You're gonna like it. And <laughs> You've seen it, right? You recommend it. it? I recommend it. It's funny. Yeah. It's one of those things where everyone has seen it. Some people are like, "Oh, I don't know if I liked it," but it's the fact that it's a true story. You just have to see it because it's true, mostly true. Um, it's good. You yeah, like a, a, another another f a book I'm reading right now. I just started. Also, it's the the, the future of money, and it, it really mm -hmm. talks about the evolution of uh, uh, the money, really, and uh, yeah. the uh, cryptocurrencies and so on. And um, it, it comes from people who are scientifically looking into that. So uh, I think um, 
I would recommend it to anybody who wants to know more about this type of uh, currencies. Oh, it's a good good shout. I'll definitely check it out because I I feel like um, all my friends understand Bitcoin and crypto, and I'm just still very much uh, away from that. I need to get a bit more <laughs> knowledge. Oh, you about, now you have NFT. <laughs> But yeah, it's fine. I'm an old school investor and I'll probably stick like that for a while. Um, what's your favorite social media platform right now, Eva? I, I only have time for one. And even that, I think it's, you know, too, too disruptive. Um, it's Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. And Dr. Yanis? Well, I mean, I, I like social interaction, but I'm an amateur when it comes to digital. I, I do use uh, Instagram. Yeah. Uh, and that's the only one. Nice. And my last question, um, I'll start with you, Eva, is, oh, actually, no, I have two more. One is, do you guys have like a favorite mantra or quote? Yes, I actually use my quote today to the team. Um, if you do good, good things will happen to you. I, I always, I live my whole life like this. And, and I think we talked about charities and other things. In, yeah. Whenever I we do something positive, I feel like it's coming back another way in another time, but it's, it always comes back. So true. And Dr. Yanis? Uh, well, I have a few according to, to my day. Uh, you know, I do believe in having a balance, and as we said before, mm. and measure in everything. Um, but sometimes just uh, excess in, in, in moderation as well. Very true. I like that. <laughs> Um, and my last question is, if you both weren't in the beauty industry, what would you be doing right now? I think I would be doing what I was doing when I was a teenager. I was, um, I was competing in track and field and I was a high jumper in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. and, and I loved it. It was this team spirit and, you know, traveling with you teammates around to wow. different competitions, international, and yeah, probably I would be doing something with sports. Nice. And, and I would follow my other uh, idea, which was to become an oceanographer. I really love the sea and I love yeah. to, to discover how the sea works and how we can live with the sea without destroying it and basically learn all the secrets. And it's a, it's a, um, it's scientific, but it's also something that I really feel um, very naturally um, close to because I was born next to the sea. Yeah, oh, I can amazing. I can tell you he's the happiest uh, when he's in the close ocean to the, the Greek sea. blue sea. I mean, <laughs> most people would be, but I can imagine. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just it's the crystal blue seas, and it's just amazing. It's phenomenal. Well, no, it's been an absolute pleasure. I know um, you've had a long day and um, you have a business empire to run, but I just really appreciate uh, the time to share your wisdom to everyone listening and also to myself. Um, but where can everyone find um, your, your own handles, if you're willing to share, but also 111 Skin on social and website? Yeah, it's just 111 Skin, I believe our Instagram and yeah. And also Dr. Yanis Official. Is my platform for more medical advice. Amazing. And Eva, yours is Eva111. Eva at Eva101skin. Amazing. Well, I'll put all the links in the summary bio so everyone can just go tap ahead and um, make sure you follow the journey. And if you haven't tried it, you will not regret it. So make sure um, that you do try um, as soon as you can. But thank you so much for sharing. And thank uh, you we'll, so much. We'll catch up soon. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, thank you for your time and have a nice night. Take care. Mm -hmm.